Good day everyone, welcome again to another episode of Tanks Training. Today I will discuss to you about the lessons learned from the Tanks case of Ms. Clarita de Guzman, a.k.a. Claire de la Fuente. Ito po yung famous natin na singer. No? But before that, I would like to say thank you sa atin pong mga subscribers. So, umabot na tayo ng 4,790 uh, no? subscribers. So, thank you very much. And for those na hindi pa po nag-subscribe, please subscribe to our channel. And we promise to bring you more tax information and tax updates. No, Hindi lang mga updates yung dadalhin natin sa inyo, pati yung mga uh, mahirap intindihin na mga tax cases, mga lessons learned from the tax cases ng mga famous na mga celebrities. Dadalhin po natin sa inyo para mas lalo ninyong maintindihan. Okay? So... Lessons learned from the tax case of Ms. Clarita de Guzman, aka uh, Claire de la Fuente. Ano po ba ito? No? Ito po yung criminal case number 01-172-0173-0174-0175-0176-0177-0178. So, 78 counts po. Yung criminal charges na nakafile po kay singer natin na si Claire de la Puente. No? At criminal case po, may kasama ding civil uh, case. No? So, entitled People of the Philippines, ito po yung nagreklamo, versus the Philippine Corinthian Liner Corporation or PCLC and Clarita de Guzman, aka Claire de la Puente. No? Decision dated June 30, 2020. Ang decision po na ito ay uh, ginawa ng Court of Tax Appeal noong June 30, 2020. No? Ang number one po niya na decision is accused Clarita de Guzman, a.k.a. Claire de la Puente, is hereby found guilty beyond reasonable doubt of violating Section 75, 76, and 255 in relation to Section 253 of the NIRC of 1997, as amended in CTA criminal case number 01-72, 01-173, 01-74, 01-75, 01-76, 01-77, 01-78, 01-79, 01-80, 01-81, 01-82, 01-83, 01-84, 01-85, 01-86, 01-87, 01-88, 01-89, 01-90, 01-91, 
98. Oh? For each of the consolidated criminal cases, it ordered to pay a fine of 100,000 pesos. So ordered, ang sumulat po ng uh, decision is si Maria Belen M. Ringpis Liban, no? Associate Justice po ng Court of Tax Appeal. Okay? Aralin po natin kung ano itong mga basis, no? Bago natin alamin kung ano yung nangyari, bakit nagkaroon uh, ng uh, ganong hatol kay uh, Ms. Claire de la Puente, no? Alamin po natin kung saan kinuha, anong provision po ng uh, tax code siya ay na-convict po, nagkaroon siya ng criminal case, no? So, sinabi po kanina doon sa decision na we have Section 75, Declaration of Quarterly Corporate Income Taxes. No? So, ito yung basihan kung bakit nagkaroon siya ng criminal charges. Section 75, Declaration of Quarterly Corporate Income Tax. No? Ano po nakasaad dito? Mandatory po ito. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya optional. Kailan mo siya talagang gawin. Every corporation shall file in duplicate a quarterly summary declaration of its gross income and deduction on a cumulative basis for the preceding quarter or quarters upon which the income tax, as provided in Title II of this code, shall be levied, collected, and paid. So, um, hindi po niya ginawa yung pag-file po ng uh, quarterly na corporate income tax no, under Section 75. The tax so computed shall be decreased by the amount of tax previously paid or assessed during the preceding quarters and shall be paid that later than 60 days from the close of each of the first three quarters of the taxable year, whether calendar or fiscal year. Sabi nga natin, ang corporation pwede po sila mag-fiscal year. So, uh, tatlong beses sa isang taon po ginagawa ang quarterly income tax or pinafile. Bakit? Kasi yung pang-apat, annual na yun. No? Yun na yung final adjustment return. Okay, so another is Section 56, final adjustment return. Every corporation liable to tax under Section 27 shall file a final adjustment return covering the total taxable income for the preceding calendar or fiscal year. If the sum of the quarterly tax payments made during the said taxable year is not equal to the total tax due on the entire taxable income of the year, the corporation shall either pay the balance of tax still due or carry over the excess credit or be credited or refunded with the excess amount paid as the case may be. Kasi yun na nga po yung final adjustment return, yun yung annual, no? So, kailangan mag-file po lahat ng corporation. Huh? In the case corporation is entitled to a tax credit or refund of the excess estimated quarterly income taxes paid, the excess amount shown on its financial adjustment return may be carried over and credited against the estimated quarterly income tax liabilities for the taxable quarters of the succeeding taxable years. Once the option to carry over and apply the excess quarterly income tax against income tax due for the taxable quarters of the succeeding taxable years has been made, such option shall be considered irrevocable for the taxable period and no application for cash refund or issuance of a tax credit certificate shall be allowed therefore. No? So requirement po under Section uh, 76 na mag-file po now. Uh, final return ang isang corporation. Another source po na ng conviction niya is Section 255. Ito po yung failure to file return, supply correct and accurate information, pay tax withheld and remit tax and refund exist taxes withheld on con compensation. So, any person required under this code or by rules and regulations promulgated there under to pay any tax make a return, keep any record or supply correct the accurate information who willfully fails to pay such tax make such return keep such record or supply correct and accurate information or withhold or remit taxes withheld or refund excess taxes withheld on compensation at the time or times required by law or rules and regulations shall in addition to other penalties provided by law upon conviction thereof be punished by a fine of not less than 10,000 pesos and suffer imprisonment of not less than one year but not more than 10 years. No? 
any person who attempts to make it appear for any reason that he or another has in fact filed a returner statement or actually files a returner statement and subsequently withdraws the same returner statement after securing the official receiving seal or stamp of receipt of internal revenue office wherein the same was actually filed shall upon conviction therefore be punished by a fine of not less than 10,000 pesos but not more than 20,000 pesos and suffer imprisonment of not less than one year but not more than three years. No? Uh, section 256, ito naman po yung penal liability po para sa corporations. So any corporation, association or general co-partnership liable for any of the acts or omissions penalized under this code in addition to the penalties imposed therein upon the responsible corporate officers, partners or employees shall upon conviction for each act or omission be punished by a fine of not less than 50,000 pesos but not more than 100,000 pesos. So yun po yung mga penalties. No? Ngayon, pinagmulan po ng conviction or yung uh, basihan doon sa penalty na iginawad po kay Ms. Claire de la Puente. No? Okay. Ano po bang issues dito sa uh, criminal uh, charges po na naifile po kay Ms. de la Puente? Ang issue po dito na dinala sa Court of Tax Appeal at uh, nagmula po ito sa kaso na naifile po ng BAR kay Ms. de la Puente. So, pinapadesisyonan po sa Court of Tax Appeal whether or not the accused si Ms. Claire de la Puente at saka yung PCLC, yung Philippine Corinthian Liner Corporation, kung criminally and civilly liable ba sila for the crimes charged in the seven consolidated cases. So, pitong kaso po ang naifile sa kanila ng BAR. No? Uh, ano po yung arguments dito? O, sabi ng prosecution, uh, they argue that PCLC engaged in the transport business in 1998 to 2004 where it derived income from its business operations but failed to register as a taxpayer. Hindi po nagpa-register sa BAR pero may negosyo. No? Failed to make and file the returns for the said taxable years and failed to pay the taxes due their own. So, Ito pong PCLC, makikita naman natin ito eh, yung Philippine Corinthian Liner Corporation. Ang dami nito na oh, no? uh, Hindi ko lang alam dahil nag-COVID na, so wala ng mga bus. No? Pero nakikita ko pa ito eh, na maraming nagbabiyahe. No? But uh, they failed to make and file the returns for the said taxable years noong 1998 to 2004. No? As regards its failure to register, no records of returns and registration can be found and PCLC only registered and obtained a TIN in 2005 through fraudulent means. No? Bakit fraudulent means? Kasi tiningnan ng BAR na kumuha siya ng uh, TIN sa, noong 2005 sa Binondo, RD Authority pero yun lang pagkatapos niyang kumuha wala na rin final kahit ano. No? So the prosecution claims that has presented both testimonial and documentary evidence to prove that PCLC has been operating its business from 1997 to 2004. Bakit? Kasi yung allegations naman po ng depensa ni na Ms. Claire de la Puente na hindi daw po nag-operate ang PCLC noong 1997 to 2004. No? So, ano po yung mga pinakita na ebidensya ng BAR? para mapatunayan na talagang may operations yung PCLC at saka si Ms. Claire de la Puente po ang uh, treasurer po ng corporation. No? So, this include documents. Ito, dokumento. Kaya nga po ang lessons learned natin dito yung documentation ng business transactions. So, ano pinakita ng uh, prosecution? Yung nagreklamo. No? Documents and certifications from various government agencies such as the BAR, LTO, SEC, or TFRB consisting of original issuances of the aforementioned agencies and submissions by PCLC and accused de la Puente in pursuance of operating its transport business, which include but are not limited to deed of sale of units of buses, which include but are not limited to deed of sale of units of buses with accompanying ORCR, no? Franchises, contracts of lease, of garage, uh, 
premises all designed to show the validity of PCLC to operate. Okay. The summary of apprehension the prosecution obtained from the LTO indicate actual operation of the units during the period in question. Ano pong pinakita ng uh, BIR na talagang nag operate ang PCLC? Kasi ang allegation ni Ms. Claire de la Puente, 2005 lang daw po siya nag-take over and during those time wala pong operation ang PCLC kaya daw po wala silang dapat na i-file. No? So ano po yung pinakita ng BIR? Ang pinakita ng BIR yung mga Uh, certification ng LTO ng mga traffic violations yung mga uh, na dakip yung mga buses no? na during ng trip nila nagkakaroon ng mga iba't ibang klaseng violations na nakarecord po sa LTO no? so the prosecution claims that the documentary evidence that it presented are admissible in evidence and have probative value despite being photocopies. Photocopies kasi yung original nando doon na po sa kay Ms. De La, De La Puente. No? Uh, PSCLC and accused De La Puente have custody of the originals thereof and that this show the guilt of PSCLC and accused De La Puente beyond reasonable doubt. No? Kasi kinakwestiyon nila yung Xerox copy pero yung original nasa kanila. At ang problema po dito, Uh, talagang itinatanggi ni Ms. Claire de la Puente na hindi niya alam at wala daw operation. No? So, in the process of assessing PCLC and accused de la Puente of their civil obligation for unpaid taxes, the prosecution claims that there was no violation of their constitutional right to due process and equal protection. No? So, remember, uh, matagal na po itong case na to, no? ngayon lang na decisionan. Notices were regularly issued and served. No? The civil liabilities were also computed under the best evidence obtainable rule which is permitted under the power of the commissioner to make assessments. Why? Kasi walang basihan, hindi sila nagpa-file. No? Moreover, the prosecution was able to prove the civil liabilities of PCLC and accused Dela Puente through preponderance of evidence. So, yung mga uh, dokumento po na ipinresenta ng BIR, yun po yung nagpapatibay ng conviction ni Ms. Claire Dela Puente on these criminal cases. No? The prosecution likewise maintained that accused Dela Puente is a responsible corporate officer of PCLC having represented herself as president and representative of PCLC to third parties and since she is the treasurer of the company on record with the SEC. So kahit po tinatanggi ni Ms. Claire de la Puente na hindi niya alam na nag-ooperate ang PCLC, makikita sa third party na nire-represent po niya at siya yung nakarecord sa SEC na siya po yung treasurer. No? As such, she is liable for the violation committed by the corporation. Hence, both accused are guilty of the crimes charged and are civilly liable for the alleged deficiency income taxes for taxable years 1998 to 2004. Yung apat na taon na po na yan. But uh, dito po sa nangyari na to, noong 2006 na matay yung asawa ni eh, Ms. Claire de la Puente. No? Uh, pero alam na niya noong namatay siya na mayroon na po silang at kinakasuhan na sila ng BIR. No? So, on the other hand, the defense, ito yung grupo naman ni Ms. De La Puente, the defense argues that prosecution failed to prove the guilt of accused De La Puente beyond reasonable doubt. Kasi po, pagka criminal no, na kaso, ang, uh, diyan kami i-convict, kailangan beyond reasonable doubt. Pag may kunti lang na doubt dyan, na uh, hindi ka ang gumawa, hindi ka pwedeng i-convict. But in this case, napaka-strong po ng evidence against Ms. Claire de la Puente, no? So she claims she's not guilty of the crimes charged and merits an acquittal. Charges against PCLC should also have been dropped because a corporation cannot be sued in a criminal complaint. Sabi lang niya yun, pero pwede po. At sino yung i-sued or i-demanda sa kasalanan ng corporation? Yung kanyang mga board of directors, no? Neither has the liability of PCLC been proven by clear and convincing evidence. Sabi lang po niya yun. Pero, on the other hand, mas uh, stronger yung kabila kasi may dokumento po silang pinipresent. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na napaka-importante ng dokumento. 
that's why doon sa free bookkeeping natin, doon sa mga ginagawa natin na mga sabi natin, bookkeeping is the heart of tax compliance. Documentation po talaga ng business transaction is very important. No? Kasi dito, allegations lang yung kay Ms. Claire de la Puente. Ang BIR, meron talaga silang dokumento na ipinisita. Si Ms. Claire, wala siyang dokumento na ipapakita. Or, hindi lang niya pinapakita, although nasa kanya yung dokumento. So, itong isang examiner na kasama, although ilan silang examiners dito, pero ito yung nag-testify sa court, eh. testified that based on the documents he and his team gathered from a different regulatory bodies, they were convinced that PCLC had operations from 1998 to 2004. No? That his belief is based on the 19 franchises granted totaling 237 buses. No? 237 buses. 19 na franchises yung issued sa PCLC. So, paano mo sabihin na wala siyang operation. Huh? The application for franchise, the annual submission of required documents in relation to the franchises granted. Huh? May mga application sila, nagihiring, nandun doon si, si Ms. Claire de la Puente, siya, siya ang umaharap. No? Required documents in relation to the franchises granted and the subsequent transactions of PCLC with the LTFRB as represented by accused de la Puente. that they were constrained to estimate the income earned by PCLC during the subject years due to the, ito po ang pinaka matindi po na kasalanan dito, accused not having books of accounts and other source documents since they claim not to have operated. No? Sabi niya, hindi daw sila nag-operate, kaya wala silang mga books and mga records. Pero yung LTO, kompleto sa record. No? Meron silang mga franchises, meron silang mga traffic violations na nagbabiyahe yung mga bases. No? That their research scientific or documented studies regarding how to compute the gross income of bus through the Philippine Statistics Authority, the National Statistics Coordination Board, the Japan International Corporation Agency, University of the Philippines National Center for Transport Studies, Metro Manila Urban Transportation Integration Study because they are the known bodies that are service and study in the bus industry. No? Sila, sila yung dealing with the uh, uh, study. That since it is a transport business, the best evidence of income is the invoices or the bus tickets which there was an absence of because the end user is the riding public. And it was difficult to obtain data from the end users who do not often keep their tickets. No? That since PCLC deals with public transportation, extraordinary diligence is required of them, not only in transporting goods or persons, but also in dealing with the different government agencies which they should deal with in the most truthful manner. So yun po yung sinasabi ng kaso. No? So, balikan lang po natin. Ano yung lessons learned po natin dito sa kaso ni Ms. Claire de la Puente? No? So, yun yung pahabalik-balik ko po na sinasabi sa inyo. Napaka-importante talaga ng dokumento. No? Kasi, yung allegations ng sinasabi ng BIR patungkol kay Ms. Claire, ang sabi niya, hindi daw siya ang officer ng PCLC at wala daw operation ng PCLC noong 1998-2004. No? Pero, taliwas, doon sa mga sinasabi niya, may record ang LTO, may nakuhang mga records ang BAR na nagpapatunay. At saka yung record sa SEC na siya po yung treasurer. So, siya ang may hawak ng pera. No? So, and as such, she is the responsible officer of the PCLC. But sad to say, during the time na kinasuhan na sila ng BAR, yung asawa niya namatay na, yung father-in-law niya namatay, yung brother-in-law niya namatay, No, siya, siya yung naiwan. Na kung uh, buhay pa yung mga yun, dapat kasama niya na nakafilean uh, din ang kaso kasi mga bo uh, board members din sila, directors po ng PCLC, kasama sila na mga officers. No? Ang naging hindi lang maganda siguro dito dahil si Miss uh, Claire de la Puente yung natira. So siya talaga ang haharap. And aside from that, She's the responsible officer being the treasurer. At saka, hindi lang yun. Siya yung nagre-represent sa 
LTFRB tuwing mag-renew at kukuha ng mga franchises, no? Imagine 19 na mga franchises issued to them covering 237 buses. And yet, wala pong pinafile na income tax return, walang pinafile na percentage tax return, wala po silang uh, na-file. So ito po yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, napaka-importante po ng documentation ng business transactions because pag may problema na, pag may mga reklamo na, ito yung magsisave sa inyo. No? So very important. No? Uh, ano sabi sa atin? Invest in documentation of your business transactions. At huwag kayong papayag na kayo yung mga responsible officer. At din sabihan nyo lang later on pag may reklamo na uh, hindi kayo yung officer. Taliwas kasi. Basta't pag tumanggap kayo ng kahit anong responsibility, be sure na hindi kayo mapapahamak. Bakit? Be sure na kumpleto kayo ng dokumento. Okay? So, with that, thank you. And uh, hopefully, nakapag, uh, dala po tayo sa inyo ng mga information na makakatulong po sa atin sa ating paggawa ng mga desisyon natin at sa kalalo na sa ating tax obligation. No? The goal po ng tax training is to have a better tax compliance. Thank you and good day.